watching the video from Asmund Gold about Elden Ring, wanted to give my thoughts about it, um, see how it compares, contrast. Let's check it out. Anyway, hello and welcome. This is Reddit Tosker, and today let's do something we don't usually do on this channel. Let's criticize Elden Ring. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourselves, Ratatosker, we can't go around criticizing Elden Ring on this channel. It's off-brand. That's not what we do here. I thought you said that Elden Ring was a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And you're right, dear viewer. I do think that Elden Ring is a masterpiece. I loved it when I was playing it, and I love it now. But you know, oddly enough, I'm not really playing it right now. And I, I stopped playing it relatively soon after I finished my first playthrough. And that's weird, because that's not something I did with any of the other Souls games. I played Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, and Dark Souls 3 way more than I ever played Elden Ring. In each of those games, I had at least three or four builds that I... It's funny, it says three or four builds. I probably had 30. <laughs> I have a problem where I just keep making new characters, but I did play the ever-living shit out of all the Dark Souls games. ...played with. And if you ask me how many times I went through the main story, like, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I went through each of the games at least a dozen times. Same. Probably more. Probably a lot more. And more importantly, I was still playing them years after the games released. So all of this begs the question, if I love Elden Ring so much, why did I play it so little? Why am I not playing it right now? Why am I not constantly playing the PvP or going through the main story over and over like I did in previous titles? Yeah, it's actually super interesting. Couldn't grab mine here too. Right. Where are we at here? Elden Ring. So I have it installed even. 140 hours, maybe one gameplay playthrough. About 50 characters. Um, but it's interesting that I am also not playing this as much. I play games like Stardew Valley just as much, or God forbid, Tree of Savior. And this game's not even good. <laughs> that really is interesting. And the answer, I think, is because it's so long. My first Elden Ring playthrough was very complete. It was about as complete as you could hope. I explored everywhere, and I did pretty much everything, and I don't think I missed on any of the quest lines that I wanted to do. And I was determined from the outset to play that way. I didn't want to miss anything. I wanted to go through all the caves, all the little dungeons, and I wanted to do them in order. So I wouldn't leave Limgrave until I had explored completely Limgrave. And I didn't want to leave Lyurnia until I was sure I had gotten everything in Lyurnia. I did that in Dark Souls And at first, too. that served to be a magical experience. I loved Limgrave. It's still my favorite area. Wandering around and exploring and talking to NPCs and going through all the mini dungeons and all of it. I just thought it was all probably my favorite experience in Souls. If you had asked me how I felt about Elden Ring during the time where I was still exploring around Limgrave, I would have told you that this is the best Souls game. 100%. My favorite in the series. And then I moved on to Lyurnia and I did the same thing that I did in Limgrave. Exploring all the places, talking to all the people, making sure I missed nothing. And then I did the same thing for Lower Caled, and then I did the same thing for the Altus Plateau. Hit that place. And this was extremely time-consuming. I was still having fun, but I was getting tired. I was running out of steam. At this point, I had poured more hours into Elden Ring than I would have into several playthroughs of any of the other games in the series. But there was still so much to go. It wasn't just the overworld areas. I was also exploring the underground areas. The Three Rivers and the Eternal Cities, which are huge themselves. My underground exploration took me all the way to the deep root depths. But after going through so much, I got there and I was like, is there an end? Is there ever going to be an end to this? I keep going and going, but there's always more. There's always just more. And at the time, it was still amazing. I was still in awe, but I could tell that I was getting tired. Yeah. The repetitiveness of the little mini dungeons were starting to get to me. But I was still having fun in the Altus Plateau and the Leyendale region. They are very cookie. It cutter. helped that the environments were beautiful and the music was soothing. And it helped that it seemed like we were leading up to something. It helped that it seemed like we were getting closer to the end. And of course, the actual legacy dungeons like Leyendale 
were great. They were as good and probably better than a lot of the other dungeons that we had in other Souls games. For me, Leandil really left an impact. So at this point, everything was still okay. But then you get through Leandil, you beat Morgoth, and at that point, the only thing you have left is the mountaintop of the giants. So you get to the Erd Tree, and now you have to go off to the mountaintop of the giants. And that's really where the problem became super clear to me. The mountaintop was the least interesting area in the game. It was visually unappealing. It was mostly linear. It had no interesting enemies. It didn't even have any new enemies, I don't think. Yeah, that, that was pretty terrible. Other than the better view of the tree, there wasn't a whole lot there. It was all repeats from previous areas. What, you had the hands, you had the the crows and the dogs, you had the troll reskins. It was just terrible. I just didn't like any of it. I was exhausted. I was just exhausted of playing Elden Ring. But I was still determined to explore the entire location. I wanted to get the item descriptions, I wanted to read them, I wanted to get a full experience. But damn, when I was in the mountaintops of the giants, and I saw another one of those mini dungeons, and I'm just looking down into it, and I'm just like, God, I really just don't want to fucking do these mini dungeons anymore. I'm so tired, there's not going to be a single thing interesting in there. And there wasn't, there almost never was. But you know, you power through, I powered through it. And then I beat the mountaintop of the giants. And then what does the game do? It sends me to Farah Missoula. And at the time, I didn't really know why. I'm like, why am I here? Why am I in Farah Missoula? Yeah, I wasn't Didn't I just either. burn the Ur tree? Isn't that what I was trying to do? Why can't I just go in now? Yeah, in retrospect, you're there for the Rune of Death. But I didn't have that retrospect at the time. I was just confused. Why am I in this nice dragon area? Farah Missoula itself was a perfectly fine area. It was, it was enjoyable to go through. It was okay. But I think my appreciation of it just was not as good as it could have been. I really like the level design, the dragons, the boss. Like, it was all really good, but I shared the same sentiment. I had no idea why I was even there. Because of how long it took to get there. The mountaintop of the giants left a really bad taste in my mouth. My whole first playthrough took, like, 250 hours. Something, something along those lines. I was very thorough. I explored everywhere I could find. It was a very complete playthrough. But it was so complete, and it took so long, that I really just didn't want to play it again. And like I mentioned, that's not something that happened in the other Souls games I've played. I would usually make several builds, and finish the story half a dozen times, before I took a break. And that begs the question, well, why did this happen? Why did I get so exhausted after just one playthrough? And I'm not really 100% sure, but let me go ahead and just ramble on and speculate. First of all, I think it's the open world. A lot of the early joy for Elden Ring comes about from not knowing anything. You know, you, you go out and you explore, you go into the mini dungeons, you traverse the land. It's really nice, you, you go out and figure it's out what's around, around the lot. next bend. But when you do a really complete playthrough, you can't get that feeling again the next time around. You know what's around the next bend. You went down that bend. And the content around those little bends, the content in the open world, in the mini dungeons, they're not substantial. Like, they're not as substantial as something like the legacy dungeons. The legacy dungeons I find enjoyable no matter how many times I do them. But the open world really only had an appeal for me while I was exploring it the first time. Once I know what's there, it doesn't hypnotize me into wandering around like it did before. Which is sad because wandering around Limgrave is probably some of the most fun I've had in any memory. Souls games. It's, it's a precious memory no problem, that I can't baby. seem to recreate anymore. <laughs> Another reason that makes multiple playthroughs difficult for me is that there's no by candy. default solo host invasion anymore. Mm -hmm. Typically, I make multiple builds at several different levels so I can invade in different areas of the game. And getting randomly invaded while my builds are not yet prepared really spiced up that experience. <laughs> it shoots in a little excitement into the monotony of build making. And that doesn't really happen in Elden Ring. I could turn on the Tantra's Tongue, which would let it happen, but it's not the same, really. Because first of all, it's no longer a surprise, and the Tantra's Tongue doesn't have a cooldown, which means you'll get invaded back to back. How invasions worked before in previous games where you could get invaded solo was that after you got invaded, if you killed the invader, you wouldn't get invaded again for a while. There was a cooldown where you could progress through the level before you had to deal with another invasion. It's 
never really been big on the PvP aspect of it, uh, mostly because of Dark Souls 3. Uh, people are just spamming the shit out of cheap tactics. It's fun to get invaded, but if it's happening constantly, that doesn't give you the opportunity to make progress on your build. Mm -hmm. And finally, when you do get the build done, I think that Elden Ring has less interesting PvP mechanics than Dark Souls 3 had. Yep. I've heard it's gotten a lot better lately with recent patches, but on release, the Ash of War damage was so high, so incredibly high. Damage in general in Elden Ring just is much higher than it was in Dark Souls. And with everybody spamming their favorite high-damaging weapon art in duels and in invasions, it got really boring really quickly. And actually, even mechanically, how duels worked and how invasions worked was way less interesting. In Dark Souls 3, you can summon up to five red phantoms at a time, which was fantastic, because this is what resulted in the whole Fight Club thing. A host that wanted to start a Fight Club could summon, you know, five red phantoms, and a culture developed where the phantoms that weren't participating in the current duel would back off, wait at the side of the ring, and then they would wait their turn. When one of the red phantoms died, another of the red phantoms went forward. That's a problem in video games in general. There's no more honor. <laughs> like you, you rarely see people doing that kind of stuff. And they just keep doing this until the host himself got tired of summoning phantoms and wanted to participate himself and got killed. I always really liked this duel culture. If a phantom got impatient and just really wanted to attack the host, all the other phantoms would take offense and attack him, killing him. And in fact, some red phantoms would go there specifically to do that, specifically to draw the ire of the other dual participants, either so that he can fight them all at once, or so he could kill the host before they could stop him. Sadly, in Elden Ring, you can't do that. You can only summon two red phantoms at a time in Elden Ring, which is just not the same. Oh, and you know what's also fun? In Dark Souls 3, there were places where you would get invaded by Covenant groups. Covenants. I miss those. Don't you miss those? I miss those a lot. I do. If you entered these areas, people would get called if they were in that covenant to come defend it. And so what it was fun to do was go into these areas, activate the Tauntress Tongue so that there's no cooldown so you can just keep getting invaded constantly, and seeing how many you can take down before you die. Which could be brutal because there could be up to three covenant members coming at a time, plus whatever red phantoms came out. And if you're in that covenant, a lot of the times you can go in there and you'll see this group of gankers that are just there killing the phantoms as soon as they appear, Love killing your invaders. Time and what was often fun was to wait around, hide until more backup shows up, and then as soon as you see them, you together go in and attack them as a group. You can have these big 3v3s. And it'd be super fun because it could take a really long time to actually get a win in one of these. Maybe the group that you're invading, the gankers, are actually pretty good, and they keep taking out your fellow phantoms. But if things are moving at a high pace, another one will get summoned before long, and so this, uh, like these engagements, these skirmishes, can last a while. If they take out both of your phantoms, you can retreat, run back to the enemies, um, or if there are no enemies, just run around trying to not die long enough for more people to come in and help you. It was awesome. It was amazing. And it's not an Elden Ring. Just completely not there. Obliterated from existence with no replacement. So, there. Those are my complaints. Game was so long it got exhausting. The magic of the open world can't be recreated for subsequent playthroughs. Duels are less interesting without fight clubs, and invasions are less interesting without covenants. And that's the end of this video. His focus a lot on PvP, I think. My biggest issue is exactly what he said about the dungeons. There's not a lot going on in there, but there have been some updates. Um, which we probably... There have been updates, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to play. I mean, I have it downloaded. So, who knows? Who knows? This This stuff drives me absolutely insane. Like, I clicked on the patch notes, and I get <laughs> hit with ads. So they added a Coliseum. What's up, babe? Is it outside? You look beautiful. I wanted to make it, like, some of all the colors, so I did, like, um, all the colors other than green. Mm -hmm. all, all around him, like, dots around the eyes. 
Okay, baby. So, brand new multiplayer feature, as well as hairstyles, balance adjustments, the Coliseum of Limgrave, Kaled and Linda are now open. So, one on one duels, free for all, team battles. Let's take a look at what this looks like here. <laughs> Let's see, Elden Ring. Oops. Thing is, I'm just not super. Blur like magic. New. Like at all. It's interesting. To a new video, and welcome back to Elden on a lot of things. Um, but when they dropped this. It will give you all the options to select all the game modes, whichever maps you want, or all of them. Yeah, so you whether you want to allow summons or not, duels, team fights, free for alls, it's all here. I'm definitely going to check out all of the game modes, but you know me, I like the duels the best. So let's get straight in there. Let's see if my uh, sleep build still works. All right, we're in the Caleb map. Nice. Yes, I like this one. I like the mood, mood of it. All right, let's see That's if. Uh, actually, pretty cool. You can't hide behind a pillar. Don't do it. <laughs> when I do this. <laughs> oh, you did. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be enough. So obviously one game of the year. But I feel like so many others had, had a chance there. Uh, update stability. I've never really had an issue with stability. Increased poise damage. So things have changed a little bit. I may revisit it at some point, but... Who knows? Either way. Thanks for watching. If we do play Elden Ring, I'll go ahead and post it on my Twitch channel. Um, appreciate you watching some videos with me. So what I'll probably be doing when I have some downtime in the middle of the day and I don't really have time to do a playthrough of any games uh, while the kid's sleeping. But thank you. We'll see you soon.